with 0.2 seconds left on the clock. 0.2. Point two. Couple small. Whenever the Royals are in town, I'm there every home game I can make it. There you go, small takeout. So I got the Royals. That's last year's picture. Those boys are, a lot of them are gone now. Oh, you. uh, you're welcome. Yeah, of course I was at the game. <laughs> Reeling with three straight losses, the Victoria Royals went to enemy territory, facing elimination. With their season on the line, the Royals jumped ahead early and held on late to tie the series. With six close games now in the books, it's a series that comes down to one final battle. Game seven, Rockets and Royals, next on Shaw. I walked in with probably just as much anxiety as they did. I was excited and nervous about this game like I hadn't been for any other game since we've been here. Save on Foods Memorial Center was absolutely electric. The building was like I've never seen it before. Unbelievably loud for 7,000 people. We fed off that. I think we scored you know, within two minutes of, of opening the game. Rebounding score! They got an early goal. They had great pressure around the Kelowna goal. The Royals held a 2-0 lead after the first period. Alex Forsberg on the power play. And the Royals lead 2 nothing. I think we're really happy. You know what? We wanted to come in and have a good start. The flurry continued in the second with relentless pressure on Rockets goalie Michael Herringer. The chances mounted, but the score remained. Didn't add to that 2 nothing lead, so we wondered, okay, is that going to come back and haunt them a little later in the game? Down to Kirkland, centering, block, loose, right in a goal, and they score! The Rockets get a bounce. When Kelowna scored that first goal early in the third, it's like, woo, that, that, yeah, that was a big game changer. Trailing by one, the Rockets get desperate. They pulled Herringer out with two minutes left. The Royals had good possession down low in their own zone. They were trying to kill the puck along the boards. Not a bad strategy, but maybe a little early. Bailey the whole crowd got up, and I'm sitting where I sit. I sit right on the boards, and I'm watching. There's a whole crowd standing up and they're counting the clock and thinking, guys, sit down, the game ain't over yet. We really try to keep it moving so there's going to be no whistles. But when it popped out to the line, you thought, well, Kelowna's got one more chance. I looked up and I was like, is the clock still? Like, I looked up, I'm like, okay, hey, the clock's got to be out. And I was like, wow, 0.2 seconds. Can you absolutely Imagine what you just saw. Oh. It's disbelief. It was like uh, one arrow through 7,000 hearts at once. People were looking at each other like, are you kidding? What did we just see here? Absolutely stunned. It was nuts. Absolutely nuts. I, uh, I have never seen a building switch from pandemonium to shock so quickly. The Rockets rode the momentum into overtime. Less than six minutes in, Scores! it was over. Turkov with the overtime winner. Leaving a team and its fans searching for answers. Words can't really describe it, you know, just empty feeling in your stomach and uh, one of the tough goals I've been on the ice for, but yeah, it's tough. You're two tenths of a second away from moving on, right? And the biggest disappointment is, is, is you have to go in and, and you have to address the group after. And for everything that uh, they've done, how hard they've battled and, and how hard they've played all year, to go in and, and keep in perspective that, you know, there's disappointment, but these guys are kids. And, and uh, you know, I, th I think there's a lot of guys in there today that, uh, are still wondering what if. I've been playing in my mind, like there's so many things that could unfold as hockey. Like there's a multitude of variables. Dimitri hitting hit that, the way that puck hit the post. Block Dimitri to center for the empty net. Dimitri off the goal post. Had it hit a dead center and it came back at us, there's no icing. There's a game changer. Like there's so many different things. But the puck hit the post where the post meets the, the net and it was icing which brought the play back to our end. You go two inches that way, and the puck goes in, it's a 3-1 game. The hockey gods were with Kelowna. It's, it's sad, but that's the way it went down. I mean, it was the biggest. It was an opportunity for the franchise to get into the third round for the first time ever. In a season to remember, it's one game and one moment Royals fans will never forget. You know, as weird as it sounds, like 
that's how you want to lose a game. You want it to be that, you know, tight overtime, game seven sold out arena kind of loss. And, you know, it's, if you can say it, it, it was like a picture perfect loss. People are going to say, well, where were you in game seven in 2016 against Kelowna? But today's heartbreak is tomorrow's hope, with most of the Royals set to return for next season. We'll learn from this, and hey, everybody, everybody knows that in sports there's usually disappointment before celebration. I think when we look back, um, we'll understand how big that game was in terms of the growth of the franchise. September's going to come right around the corner, and we'll be back to the best place on Blanchard Street to watch the best hockey in Canada again.